I'm pretty young, but it's my 18th year coaching uh, specialist. I started right after I finished at University of Miami. Um, I was a kickoff specialist, field goal guy. Uh, I was a really good punter in high school. I was an all-state performer, but you know, when you go to a certain level, like you realize real quick that I'm a five iron, and I'm about to talk about it, some three irons. You know, I am a, I'm a punter. I mean, I'm a kicker by just, by the way, I'm built. You know, in high school, you're going to have to just take a good kicker and make a good punter. But I will say that, like, if you're trying to identify a good punter today, if you want to keep in mind about what I'm looking for, you want to look for a taller kid. You know, he's got a longer leg, he's got a higher table, all these, all these things I'm talking about right now, we're going to talk about in depth. But, yeah, so uh, I'm going to share with you how to compartmentalize training. I'm going to show uh, how many drills there are, you know, how many stages to, the, to one rep there can be, uh, what angles to film from. It's very important. And in this day and age, it's fantastic because you guys can be in, in the thick of a, a practice, and then if they're in Indy, you know, while you guys are in something like inside, they need to have their cell phones on. You know, and just have the expectations and the trust that, that they're using those phones. You know, they're Snapchatting and all that crap, and yeah, take it away. But I can't stress to you enough how important it is to film these days. I wish I could have had a, a portable camera when I was 18, right? So utilize technology, embrace it. Um, I realize that there's, there's some shortcomings to it, but what, what in life doesn't have those? Uh, objectives, like I was just getting through, we're going to talk about stance and start today. Some guys just kind of stand like they're standing in line. Others stand like, I don't know what this is, but it's weird. Um, we're going to talk about like things like that that can affect everything that happens after the fact. Um, the mold is like, how the ball is being possessed in your hand. This is a good mold. I grabbed it. I've done this long enough. Most guys will palm it. You know, most guys will hold it like I call it a U shape. You know, it's going through the U of my hand. Um, we're going to talk about the importance of just how to hold it and how to guide it with the guy in hand. Think of it like basketball. Right Reception and table. I took a picture of this because it's a really good example. And the table should kind of run from your sternum or your armpit. Either way, you want to think about it. Same thing. Uh, just to give gravity a chance to fall at like the knee where the contact should be. Most kids will hold it down here. And when gravity takes effect, they're going to kick well below the knee which is a driven ball, which gives time and space to the most important athlete in the field and the most dynamic athlete, PR. So um, back to compartmentalization, like I'm going to show you a one-step drill, low impact, to more focused on like the, the, the last third of the punt, obviously a full step. I'm going to show you positive and negatives, what goes on at the second step. Um, the second step is also called our plant step, or two-step punting. Advantage for the most part. Angles, like I mentioned before, um, it's very important. You can be off ever so slightly, and it's not really going to have the same impact as if you were where I need to. Um, setting standards and training, we'll talk about that at the very end. Uh, just some visuals of that, too. So, stance and start. This is Johnny Townsend. Uh, if you guys are Gator fans, he was a Gator for a long time. Uh, played for the Raiders as a free agent right now. He's a phenomenal punter, and he's got a phenomenal stance and start. Notice he's got his glute engaged a little bit. He's not standing tall, standing in line. He looks ready to strike. His weight is distributed on the balls of his feet, not on the heels, and also not on the toes. I think that's vital. It's hard to see that. I'm telling you, in order to, in order to have that moment, um, let's get our weight here, please. Uh, narrow base, uh, tough angle for that because it's a side angle. But notice that his base is, I'll just show you guys, it's, it's not shoulders. It's actually inside shoulders just a little bit. Okay, I don't want them wide. And if you stood up right now and did that test, you'd be shocked how much heavier you felt if you lean six inches out, which a lot of kids do. Glute, you know, we talked about glute, but obviously he's complementing a good glute with a flex core, you know, and his, he's thinking nose over toe. That's actually perfect. Nose over toe. Uh, and what I do is say the same thing in a thousand different ways. What you should do as coaches, right? We 
you got to say the same thing three, four, or five different ways so everyone in the group that's receiving gets it. Um, stand tall. Big target, obviously. I talked about you before. If a kid's down here, I know they think this, this is a, enabling them to be more powerful, but it's really, really a disconnect with the long snap. It was 15 yards away looking at half of the target, right? And it really doesn't help. We'll talk about keeping our natural height later, so there's really no, there's really no purpose in doing it other than it's hurting your teammate. Um, receiving your hands is very, very self explanatory. <laughs> I've noticed that a lot of guys, especially at the high school level, will wait till here to receive, and then they'll go extend and get it comfortable, and then they'll step. You'll watch today, these higher level guys will catch out and step. It takes two tenths of a second on it. It's just, again, two four or two two in college, it's blocked or it's not, right? Um, leading with balls, receive, we'll talk about to you. You can't leave the ball receiving, you receive it in, you get it, and then step. But you can if you go out and get it. Go out and grab the ball. Uh, they they should, they be the punters, they should find time to do hands work. I know it's not reality to have a jugs machine every high school. I realize that. But we have what's called PSDs where I was in high school when I coached there. Position-specific drills was before practice for 10 minutes. And that's where you had time and place for punters to go with receivers. Because receivers were going to do their position-specific stuff, right? So find a way to get your punters involved, even if it's playing catch with you uh, after practice. They must have sure hands. And I really think that, that is uh, neglected a lot. I think that the expectation is they go out there and they just receive punt snaps. Um, and I think that's, that's pretty ridiculous. Um, so have them catch footballs. Have them be athletes. Here was our punting mold. Five examples, sorry about the lighting on certain ones, but I think you'll get it. Um, let's start with one. I want a handshake. So just look at me for a second. If you see a kid grabbing a ball like so, it's going to happen. Palm, I call it palm up tendency. Don't like that. This is a hand, that's what I mean by handshake. So then the ball can slide in, right, and I can get comfortable. Now looking at one, the radial bone, right, the forearm, the outside of your forearm, should run along that seam. Does everyone see that? So it's not like this, it's like so, yeah? The thumb is placed on this panel. Let me explain something to you. You've got small hands like me. That thumb, look at me for a sec, get a smaller guy to grip closer to. If you see the whites, like you know when you watch uh, pre-snap tendencies with linemen, and you see the whites in their fingers, Anyone? Same thing. If you see whites on a punter, hands in the mold, it's not comfortable. There's stress, right? And when they're stressed, the grip is too tight. And when the grip is too tight, there won't be a good release, right? We want a flat ball, flat foot later. This is, this is vital, guys. So, that being said, um, let's go to two. Notice the uh, punt side pinky. So he's a right foot punter, so his right hand, it's not like so, is it? Because that's, that's palm up tense. Again, I'm going to say the same thing a thousand ways, it all connects. If we handshake mold, I'm good, right? So it's important because look, I'm going to go ahead and do the bad technique. Pinky over. Pinky over palm will cause for what? Nose down. We want a flat ball, flat foot. Flat ball, flat foot. Flat ball, flat foot. That's guys in the NFL. Flat ball, flat foot. Okay, number three, it's really weird because you look at your thumb, the base of your thumb has this line, it's very pronounced, like wrinkle, we all have it. I run that wrinkle to the side seam. That is another way to say the same thing. I'm on the third picture, it all is just tricking you into doing the same exact mold. All these things work out. Here's a bad example, I didn't do bad way. When that side seam goes above, now we have to have manipulation of football. I have to manipulate my body to get a flat ball, flat foot. Yeah? Okay? So again, just side seam reference is excellent. And then another one, here's the palm. If they're too palmy, is that side seam lined up? Right? Same thing, said a different way. So no palm technique. There should be a little bit of a pocket. I want to write that down too. There's 
should be a little bit of a pocket so they, they're possessing with what we're, we're in better control. Fingertips, right? Because we have a guy here. Don't forget. You're not just holding one hand. So three is excellent, actually, visually of the two. Four is the uh, punt side, okay? Relaxed group, we already talked about it. This is where you would see the stress in the fingers, but notice how comfortable that looks. Um, and I will say that Johnny is the nose down technique, but again, look at the nose. I mean, yes, it's down, but that's acceptable. I mean, let's be honest, you're gonna see some crazy ball action when you have your ice skates. It's gonna be yump, or it's gonna be butt for a while. But that's excellent. If it can ever get to that, I, I'm, I'm with it. It's just another, oh, guide hand. So this is five. This would be the guide hand. So if I'm holding it right, once I get all those things in possession, like the pinky check, the thumb check, the radial bone check, all that jazz, look what I do now is I just possess where there's a void. Right? Possess where there's, there's a void. And think of it like a basketball. Step Curry, probably one of the best shooters in the history of the world. Um, he would be good with just his right, yeah? But he's great because he delays the plant side, right? He's got a guide hand that's saying, you're my target. I'm not going to let it go that way, right? He's excellent. He almost delayed it to, to, to a fault, right? And it's, it's, it's the same principle. Um, I've noticed that guys treat, especially punters, this football like it's a hot potato. Like they want to get rid of it as fast as they can. And then it looks all erratic and out of sorts, and you never know what it's going to do. But we always say, delay the drop. Delay the drop. I'm going to show you the point in which that has to happen. All right, next slide. Reception and table. Talk about it again. I'm going to say it again because it's important. We want to know about height. Like I'm a, I'm a six foot guy. My sternum is here or here. I would do one or the other, and I'd bring it out. So it's about there, okay? Now, like I said before, a 6'3 guy's table is here. Gravity's gonna fall, and he's gonna have a higher contact point and a longer leg. If he does the same thing as well as me, he's probably gonna beat me. Uh, this is uh, Johnny Hecker. You guys probably know Johnny. This is how he receives it through his kick side eye, or punt side eye, I should say. But the snap's gonna come through. I want you to watch how he handles and how quickly this happens, but watch the hands and watch the adjustment of laces. And that's where they crush the football. See the adjustment? Now I'll try to freeze it real quick. You saw how quick that happened. This kid's probably the best, well, I don't know, he's probably the third best in the world right now. There it is. So it's pretty, I mean, it happened fast, but there's stung off the scene. There's radio bone. It looks like a little nose down and in, but Again, we're trying to make sense of all this. We're trying to show you real examples. Um, the uh, slide on the right, just like the cover slide, I wanted to show you not only the solar plex and the sternum, um, but see the ball being released and look at how we're talking about a flat ball, flat foot. That's huge. That's probably better than the Johnny Towns example I said, the little, little nose down. I'm shooting up at him, but that is about as parallel to the floor as it gets. And that really is hard to miss. And I know it seems weird, and it's like, oh, it's this easy. If, if your punter can get to this stage right here, this still photo, he will hit two out of three absolute bombs. Bomb. Now, it may not go the direction yet. Like, the, there's the finish we can talk about. But if he can give himself this moment, he's going to be very, very tough. And it looks easy, right? It looks like I can do that. But we, for some reason, as humans, want to, want to get rid of this football. All right, one step drill. So again, I talked about compartmentalizing. You need to break up a practice. It can't be monotonous and just hit three, you know, full step punts the entirety, right? Like we've got to consolidate and see like where stages are and how good we are. And with this, with this right here, this is like kind of we've already gone here. We're at, we already took our first step. So it kind of gets them in a position where they did not overstride. Okay? So if you notice, what I love to talk about is shin or tib fib, right? Tib fib bone. 
knee should be delayed. What you'll see on young guys is they'll be front loaded, he will be up and knee will go over. Does that make sense? I'll show you this. It'll look like this, right? They're gonna look like that, so you guys can see. They're gonna look like bent over because they want to get downfield. But what's gonna happen is they're gonna spring downfield. You'll see, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so yeah, you get into the first step like I talked about. You know, you're taking, you're taking it. So you're already there. Okay, uh, balls from your hands. Obviously, you don't need a snapper for this. Um, guide hand release. What this means right here. This is probably one of the most important points in the whole slide. The guide hand is released. So I'm a right foot punter. My left hand is released when the feet pass. Okay, so when this passes this. This can start coming off. It's simultaneous on the left side, right? Left foot passes, left hand can come off. Let's watch that first. Yeah, you see that? See, I think this right here, this is what Johnny needs to work on. See how the knee is going? It's gonna cause for a, a bigger second step. Like he should bring this down quicker, this foot. And right now it's elongated. See how he's going to the heel right there? So it's what I call you know, punting on your brakes, right? Are, are we ever impactful or dynamic in any sport in football on our heels? Can you guys think of any? I mean, really? I, I didn't think so. So like, there, this isn't a perfect rep, but we, we're, we're kind of looking at timing of left hand, left foot, right there, to pass, it's released. I don't know how hard that is to get guys to do. I can't tell you. To the next point, the ball release, the float we call it, whatever you want to call it. So look at the kick side, punch side, the right hand right here, right? We want that to be released as close as we can to when the plant foot hits the ground. It's very hard to do, but that's not a bad example. Because if we release that too soon, this ball will be struck below the kneecap. I can't get any slower than that, but uh, you guys can see that. Um, you really, really, really must uh, delay the drop. So that's one example. Uh, <coughs> go this, way. this is um, a front side. So that was punt side. This is front side. This is a Trevor Daniel. This is the current Broncos punt. A little bit different technique than Johnny. extension on a one step, right? He's getting up and out with nothing, basically nothing, on one step. So again, I can't stress how, how important it is to stay small, delay the drop, and, and fire that plant. Um, the second step, okay, it's hard to see that we don't have a center line drawn here, but that left foot right there should come down at his like left chin. Right? I wish I could pause. Yeah, I can. So what's gonna happen is a lot of times this foot will shoot over and we call that stack. Right? He does a very good job of leaning on this side. I know it sounds weird, but they want to do this basically. They want to torque. Right? They want to get more mo. And it's better just to stack. Lean, right? So I'll show you guys too. It's like we talk about it's done well for some people, but most young guys want to stack stuff so they can hunt around, right? Like I said, he's a little different technique than Johnny, but if you look at the scene, there's a little action here, but it's going a little bit more at an angle than I like. Yeah, that probably wasn't the greatest ball. You know, because again, it's like, it's weird. I can show you on the we teach 1130. That's probably write this down. It's a great question. I'll have my so 11, this is 12 o'clock if you're my target, and you made a great point. It's probably 1030. And I think 1130 is best because if you do it late, I can show you up close. Midnight, the balls or the foot's hidden. I don't know if you can see that. But 1130, okay? And if 
the question he asks is why does it look like Trevor is sideways? I mean, kind of is. That's where you're going to see it sideways multiply. Like, or it's not a ton of, you know, it might spiral a little bit. But yeah, he probably got a little action to him. What I noticed too is the, a lot of time when you get the extension, you get palm off and then it moves the ball. Um, so is it look like, like it's just spinning? <coughs> you're just not getting all of the ball. Like it's probably more likely to, yeah, it's probably more likely to X rotate than it would be to, to rotate. Yeah. But sometimes, I mean, the pros kind of like a little wobble because it hangs longer as long as it's, you know, taking the distance. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's tough. I mean, it really is. Like, he's a pro, and he just, he just called it. Like, he made a mistake. Like, that wasn't what he wanted to do. Uh, let's watch it one more time. I do like the incorporation of hips, though. And you know what's weird, too? If you notice his finish was kind of crossed up, it's probably because he's trying to manipulate that ball. You probably saw it last second. That wasn't a good finish for him, either. That was not a good game of how he's going to recommend finish. So, a full. Um, I put a left in there. This is a, a lot of stake. He's trying to earn his spot. And I wanted to show you that, like, you know, he's not going to be as good. Uh, but he's doing a lot of good things. Flat ball, flat foot. Right, great uh, narrow feet, staggered step, which I probably don't think I talked about, but I want a staggered start, and I don't want them to be parallel toes. I want them to have a staggered start so they can step. It's almost like it's inviting a step. You know, it's, this is a very he's activating the glute. He's got his core strong, his nose, his toes, and then I also feel the bench lift and bench extend. I do not want. Is huge. I do not want that. If I were to fix him right now, he's slight, he's kind of flirting with it. Don't want this. I don't want extend, extend. Okay, we call it that. Because if we if we were designed like monkeys, it would be perfect to have extend. You get it out there and you just go kick it, right? But we're not, like, we're not quite as long as the arms. So we must have a little bit of a recoil and a nice extension on this side. So when you come through, we can get it out there. It's about a six, eight inch float. You saw I said float in the presentation. Um, we have to float that ball in our first metatarsal, which is the same for kicking. It's got to be around that impact point. You know, I can show you that guys that later. But it's, it can't be off the front. It can't be off the ankle, right? We've got to find the half a medium, and that is trial and error. Let's go ahead and watch Jacob walk. a couple of times. So that first cliff is where I thought his first good step should be. He made it pretty close to it. He shot that second step. That's very common. We're going to talk about that again. See how ground he stayed? Did you, anyone see the difference between Trevor Daniel last slide and this slide about no activation of hips? Check this out. This, please write this down. This will happen about. This happens to me every day of my life. It's a slightly too big, let's, whatever. Hold on, let me back up. I want this to be bigger, is what I'm trying to say. That should be at least to the line, and then this foot should be shot. Look how he overshoots. Unnecessarily overshoots that box. When you elongate that second stride, it grounds you 100%. This isn't just an anomaly. This is what happens, right? Look at him look, leaning back. I don't want to lean back. That's good position. But at the point of contact, you see how he's getting his hips away. <coughs> What I'm trying to say is if you give your hips away, it is a result of this not being at the cliff. That's a small short step over here with our torso. Yeah. So it should be one long step too short. It should be one, per, I, I call it big, small, even though they're about the same, because they, they never go too big. But I, I, I say big and then small. You know, because they shoot that stick and get up and out. I think this is the biggest difference between college and pro hunters, is they realize that I'm best in a smaller space, yeah. Uh, so real quick, the second line from New York. Good have question. Three. That's a great question. So, like, all right, this is his moment. Uh, good question. I never thought about this. So this circle right here, like I said, Johnny Heck, in my opinion, is one of the best in the world. I found his contact point. Write this down. It's 10, 6. 10 feet, 6 inches is impact. If he's 6'6", six, six, 
I take that circle and I think about my side, six feet, and I draw his line there. So he knows, well, and they look at Johnny's and they're like, well, better not go that far. Right? So a 10-6 rule is excellent because no one's 6 feet. We all need to be operating at 10-1, 10 feet. And that's what 10 feet is. Now, your question is excellent, and this is not the same for everyone either. What you, what you need to say instead of how far is that line is, how far is that line where my athlete's tip fit looks like this? And that's just a couple of trial and error rules. You know, not heel displaced, not toe displaced. You can tell me, though. You're like, hey, man, I found that my dad is 5'9", and it's boom. And that would help me. Because I don't deal with all sides of the shapes, but this is a great angle, obviously. And then you guys know this is 10 six. That's for a six-foot impact. Um, the plant box, I will tell you, is almost double this. We want to almost recreate that step. Right? And the reason my theory behind that is, is, again, if you thought small and then a bigger one, we're definitely I want, to, I want to match it or even maybe shoot it even before it because uh, all you're going to do is bring that leg sooner. That's a good question. Um, whoops. Let me get it back on the view. I want it too far. No, I didn't. All right. Second step from that. This is Trevor again, so we got a pro. He has a low. One thing I'll say about him is he has a very low uh, table. You can see that right away, you'll see that. I wish it was slower. So he catches with the hands pretty well. We talked about that. He adjusts in the process. Now he takes a little catch. Someone in the room asks, is it one or two? Watch. He takes a little pseudo step. You see a lot of pros do that, but look, it's probably six inches. And watch how he still finds a way to stay tiny. And then let's see what he does with his second step. See how quickly that second step comes down? You guys see the difference. But he has to because of how low his table is. Look, is his toe with a sternum? I mean, his table with a sternum? No, it's probably his ribs. But that is clutch. That is a great example of how to shoot that foot so we don't lose hips. And then we enable us to be up and out. It's a great finish. Less is better, right? Here's a bad example. Watch second step. Yeah. And look, he's 11. He's at 10 6 of the circle. You saw where he ended up? 11. He's a college punter, too. I mean, so nose is up, and that ball's moving. See how the ball was rotating? It's got to be still. It's just drop, right? He called it a drop. All right. So, back side. I'm glad you guys are looking at my lines. Um, so, I do this, and it's not a good example because he's not doing it, because I had multiple guys here that day. I like to start them, and you guys are side in the spot. I like to start them in the same spot, why? Because it makes these lines and distance points irrelevant if, if we have a different starting point this time, right? So, in my opinion, you know, I know he's a pro and probably one of the little states, but I would put his heel there and saw that. Just so I can make certain that we that we're analyzing the, the first step well, right? Now, I do this for several of my pros and college guys because what they do is on their dominant side, they tend to swing the heel. It's almost like a J run. Now, I just want a linear step to the center. Um, you can barely see it, but there's a center line and then there's a 10-6 mark. So this is a wonderful view. It looks a little weird doing it. You gotta shoot right behind them. But uh, there's this little pseudo. There's the heel I was talking about, right? So this is where Trevor Daniel could get better. If he could take that toe to the intersection point of the first cliff, not lead with the heel, because this, what does this do? It opens up his right side. You can't see it very well, but I think it's a good example of that. Another thing is, I don't know, where's my thing? What does he do to pass? Probably not allowed to pass close to the line. It's hard to see, but see how he could hug that line better? But he couldn't because he was stacked. We call this stacked. He can't go where he wants to go. He's a little closed off. Um, and you can, what I like is 
this uh, angle too. As you can see, the ball should be right at the knee. What you're going to find, what you're going to find is most of your high school specialists are going to make contact at mid shin, and it's because of a thousand things we've already addressed. They're going to want to release the guide hand too soon, and probably release their kick side, punch side arm hand off ball too soon. Gravity takes effect, and then at the very, at the very least, they'll throw their hip and get something on it. But then that's also grounded, right? So there's a lot of things that have been punting is not easy. So we'll go front side, obviously. So we got a college guy. I guess I put these in his way to the lefty. I think he had a tendency to shift outside. And when I say to some guys like this that are a little younger, think of yourself in a tunnel. So you can be linear. You shouldn't brush any of the walls, right? Focus on the feet, but obviously stay skinny. Good job receiving with the hand. <laughs> Do you see the difference in the level? I mean, look at how much just negative, unnecessary activity is going on. Like, it's like if we were playing baseball right now. Let's go ahead and think about that real quick. When he starts making forward progress to, to us, imagine hitting a baseball move like this. But if you look at Trevor Daniel, Pro, it's on a tape. See how I mean it's fixed almost. It's just it's, something's going on. There's momentum. There's a the ball is going somewhere, but we always say tape because we really want to think of it. <coughs> we want to think of it like we've done this a thousand times, but we want to and, and have them just get in their stance and start and then start walking with a flat ball, right? You know, it forces them to be equidistant on the feet and stuff and the length of the stride, but you won't see any healingness, will you? Right? You won't see any forward toe springs because they're trying to stay stable and constant. So uh, we gotta remind ourselves that we're our best when we're here. Um So, we, so I'm going to back ask a good question. Like I, I like to think of it like big, small now, and it's not necessarily true. Like they're taking two, like Noah gets me, he takes two steps. But what Noah's getting much better at is, is being mindful that like be bigger on this one and shoot this one, so I can get the hips up and out. And you're thinking, if you do want more distance off the ground, the better. Is that what I'm saying? Take a look. Yeah, because you want to enable the hips to go, and the momentum will bring them forward. Not much. I mean, like, no. it's a good question. Like, I look at people like LeBron James, and shoot, better example is Zion Williamson. If you watch that kid dunk, his last step is probably the smallest, most compact, because he wants to get vertical. He wants to be athletic. And it's just like what you've asked. I think the biggest misconception in anything you do in athletics is big is best. I really think that we play better under ourselves in everything, you know, nose over toe, whatever it is, the technique, it's never over striding, ever. It's never on our heels, right? Um, so again, I think we said it earlier, but I think it's important to reset. If we're a two-step punter, think big, small, because it enables what he wants. See, I want to utilize my body, my hips, not just swing my leg and stay grounded, right? Um, this is probably my favorite example of the entire presentation. This is a backup punter. He'll be, he'll, this is a new Florida Gators punter, but he's been on the bench for four years. This is good. Uh, I try and find, and usually I don't have indoor. Usually I have trees. Like I work out at this uh, Orange Sports Complex a lot, and there's always a tree line, right? There's always something. It's crazy. Follow that blue tarp back there with the level of his head. Tell me this kid doesn't stay on a plane. This is a 6'3 kid. Watch what he does, Coach Wilson, good question. Shoots this, small, and watch this finish. That's what you want. That's a good question. I wish you could ask that this one. You see how he had a little bit of forward progress? You know, just enough to smash the ball. Um, I think a lot of people want to handle like punting is like finish on kickoff. And I think that hurdle technique is a little different. 
Uh, I don't really know other than the fact that we're coming from two yards on a kickoff drive as opposed to one on this, but um, let me show you that again. And guys, I'm telling you, it's wild. Like this, they really, really like the biome. Like you know, my head can stay on a plane. It does wonders to my table. And I, yeah, I don't, I don't love his. He could have extended a little bit of the release. He probably uh, hit that off his ankle. But we were focused on plane, right? Head of the plane. So yeah, I don't want to. I'm gonna say that later. I did mention this already a little bit, but I gave you a visual hallway. So we had, this is Matt Rattler from UCF, he's a free agent now, but I have Matt on his center line, and then this is the outside of his body, you know, half, like halfway through, and then this is a continuation of center line. So you don't have to draw my lines. You gotta draw the lines that make sense for the athlete's problem. Right, and what he was doing was deviating away from straight down the field, and then we can build off that, right? So, you play that. He's got a weird technique, too, but it's low. You see how low he is? So, I don't like, I'll be honest, I want to adjust this in the worst way on him. He's a talented kid, but it's very low. As you can see, contact is made a little bit than me. I wish I had slow mo, but don't quite have it. See, see how low that is? It's probably a foot and a half off the ground. And the problem is, is it's just, it starts low. So, again, I'll say it again because it's so important. If you want to reference armpit or sternum, how they bench. Side seam to sternum, benching out, that's huge, huge. You know, uh, Ja'Kai Polite, you know, he, he, was, he did fine right there. Um, we had a, I used to coach with Wilson back there, and we had a, a very, very good defensive end, Kai Plate. A lot of you guys might know who he is. One of the best punters I've ever coached. You know, so I don't want to hear excuses that, like, oh, I don't have soccer players. We didn't have soccer players that year. We had a defensive end that, you know, we tried out a number of people. Um, but be proactive. Like, you'd be shocked, man. Like, this isn't that hard to a good athlete. This might be hard to a soccer player, but some of these kids, and it gets them on the field, and, and then open up things with them, you know, to keep people honest. They're not going to rush to Kai Play, probably, right? So, please don't um, give up uh, just because you don't have a guy that can do it initially. Uh, I, I, I was very surprised with him. He's a basketball player, too. I think that might have been it. Basketball players shoot really well. Like, they don't overstride because they know vertical is important. Those are probably the best athletes for staying with him myself, playing with him myself, right? So that's probably, I never thought about that, but that's probably why I had such love for him. Um, I'm going to give you a good example. I hear a lot of experts talk about, well, here's my expectation. 0.85 second snap plus a 1.35 second gain of foot equals a 2.2 second operation. I know some of that sounds like gibberish. I doubt anyone in this room has a high school long snapper that's doing that first of all. Right? And I know for sure that hand to foot means when it touches their hand when it's punted, that's how long that took. A 1.35 is exceptional. I would say, like, yeah, a few of the guys that kind of Sunday I get to work with, they're like a one, two, five, and they're a really big outlier. Like, I don't ever get to see that maybe twice a year. I would say most guys operate like a one, four in college. Like, a good college punter is a one, five, but his snapper is a point seven five. My point is, if your expectation is a 2.2 second off time on punt, you need to evaluate this as you can do with a all you gotta do is, is when the ball snap has something behind it when it hits his hand, and stop it when he's punting. And right away, you're gonna find that this guy is hurting this guy more than you think. This guy does not need to be an All-American if this guy is doing his job, which is my job. Right? I just need to receive it and punt it, right? 
I, I really want you to save that and make this slide your own. I want you to analyze your situation and see where the weakness really is. Because you may be jumping up the wrong person's back. Um, I guarantee you your client is slower than you should. And it's taking way too much time. And it could be a number of things. We talked about reception here and then getting it out and going. We talked about receiving with the hands. I guarantee you if he goes out and attacks the ball in his hands and gets it on his table, and if you notice, the pros are kind of, they're kind of, Manipulating the laces ever so slightly in the process. Whereas high school guys will receive it, get the, get the seam right, then step, you know, you can get blocked. Okay, so it's, it's everyone's fault, is, is my point. Um, I said this the last time, I don't know if I said it this time. Punters are only as good as their operation. Uh, I love that quote. I know we've all heard it, and I believe it wholeheartedly. You gotta identify a good LS. Back to uh, Nathan High School where I coached for years, I learned this there, that the best snappers are natural throwers of the football, right? So if you're playing like, a, if you got like a day where you lead, uh, you got seven period weightlifting and then the boys go out and play, like seven on seven or whatever, a little pickup, whatever. Go out as a coach and watch the guys throwing the ball. Try to find the best five to 10 guys, natural throwers of the football, and see which ones that have the right mass, like tight ends, O-line. You know, the guys that are big enough, not me. You know, weed me out. I can throw, but I'm too small probably, right? Now, I'm not saying I am. There's a kid named Jaden Adamson that's one of my favorites in high school right now, and he's tiny because he, he's so good at getting it back. You'd be shocked how quickly some of these natural throws of football adapt under the legs. So what you do is you find five, that are natural, that have the right fit, their prototypes right. And then, then you take those guys in the spring and find out which two are your best. You should have two, absolutely. People get hurt all the time. And you should service those two a couple times a week in a team setting. It shouldn't be just one, we never did that. You know, we always had two. One was definitely better than the other. But there was times where we had to use number two and he had reps. And I know it's like, ah, oh, it's more time, but you will get beat. You know, I think it's, what is it, 90% of people who get the punt block lose the game. Is that correct? Or 80%? Something ridiculously high. And it makes sense. Um, oh, and by the way, one in six and a half plays in football at all levels in special teams play. So if you're not allocating 15, 20% of your practice time, then you're going to get beat too. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a fact. People are starting to realize this. And, and, don't, and don't, don't be the guy that doesn't adapt. Oh, I didn't talk about it. So, like, sharp. Uh, so small, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Zero, one location, seven, seven and a half yards. You know, reward their behavior for short snaps. I think most of you guys in here are probably operating at seven. But I actually, this is old. I wrote something new about a week or two ago. I have found a different scoring system for short snaps, where it gives three points. Um, I'm not gonna get on my knees, but if I'm a holder, you know, obviously we, we never want to go away. You know, it's okay. Like I give, I allocate a, a two to this, a one to this, a three to this, right? A one to this that comes up, and a two that comes down. It's just if you ask a holder, they'd rather bring it down than bring it up than down. So I can show you that. I actually have a revised like scoring system for short snapping. It's fun. I'm not asking you guys to go chart and plug and show. What I'm asking you to do is. Give it to your specialists and then have them show you. Here's my charts. Here's his charts. You know, here's where I'm better, here's where he's better, here's tenant, here's where I'm stagnant, right? Because then you can really dictate, hey, next next week, I want to look over and see you spending less time kicking off. You are terrible for left hash, however, on field goals. And that might that might be where your team settings come in. Left hash strictly for you. He misses all the time. Let's figure out why. Uh, this is the long side, and then here's the visual for the long. So the long is time, obviously, you get, and the visual for that. Um, I cut them in half. You know, uh, the only thing, yeah, I'm not even gonna say that. Yeah, like roughly a three, I'm at, I've actually revised this a little bit to, uh, I think it's a little low and high in certain places, but you get the idea. Um, if you get these guys playing games, and get these guys to self-critique, that's where you're gonna see drastic improvements with minimal effort on your side. Um, all you're going to do is oversee their behavior and just encourage 
where if need be. Uh, so I wrote this for Coach Meyer years ago. Uh, it's just a sample. I can give you the whole thing. It's Monday through Friday. Saturdays execute, Sundays recover. Um, I just want to give you an example that like specialists should never take time off, man. Uh, what like dry drop means is actually not doing anything but possessing the ball and focusing on the body. I think what, what goes on too often in this room and everywhere in the country is people kick every single time they touch the ball. It, I think there's value in possessing the ball, releasing the ball, and not letting yourself do it. Right? Focus on your feet. Focus on head stabilization. Focus on delaying plant side. Focus on playing punt side. If you focus on what's important, like the football will come, I promise you. But the body must be right first, right? So I know it's like a bunch of words, but you know, like allocation of time, like 10 minutes and 10 minutes and have a break for five and two step without the ball or a lot, you know, I, I can go I can go on and on, but um, I think that there should be a structure, there should be a plan because I've seen how meticulously you guys plan in offense and defense. And I see how that third that's played one in six and a half plays is completely neglected, you know. And uh, I think it's, it's evident, you know, like uh, on Friday sometimes when just people get completely embarrassed. They, they, you don't see it a lot, but you do see sometimes when a team that does take pride in a team that doesn't. There's just no comparison. Um, dry run example. So it was in the script, so I showed you. This is Old Dominion. This is like Mainland High School right here. So look at both these guys. There's two guys, I didn't mean to do that, but the guy in the back's terrible compared to this guy in the front. He's got a big one a little bit, but see how they're, they're really taking pride without the football, right? Uh, taking pride without the football. Um, I'm going to show you a negative because I saw it. Look at the head and the track. So the head's pretty good, staying above the track, right? He's pretty, but I think this is a little too big. See how he, he, he lost the hips right there? He recovered nicely, but there's, there's definitely improvements, right? Um, backside. This is using a soccer line as a split line, or think of it like a bounce. Like you want to step on the beam. With a, if I'm a right foot person, I want my first step to step on the bounce beam, and then I want ideally my plant to step just off it so I can enable a perfect pass. This is stacked. You guys feel me? When they're stacked, they're stacked. I must go around. So step to center, stay off center. It seems simple, but let's see if he does it. Oh, he's a left. He does do it well. Did you guys catch that? That's actually a good example. I wish he'd have been more deliberate. I think that's a little whatever. I won't say it, but uh, he's on his balance beam. I love. <coughs> a little too big, whatever. And then this is excellent. See, he stays just off it, so he can pull it through. It's actually a really good example. I wish, again, I wish it was more of a game speed, realistic, momentous thing. Like he, it's not like I would jump him for that. Like I would say, do that again. <clears throat> that was terrible because he looked like he just didn't care that much. I, I want to move like that move. This kid's phenomenal. Well, I can't show you the soccer ball, which is him. Maybe I can. I won't, but I'll show you a tennis ball. So, these kids are like students of mine that I've had for a long time. I, I think you should make training hard, even if they're not very good. Right? So, I know a ball, a football is hard to punt, right? But a size one, is a this is frozen on me. But he will possess a size one, which is about that big. It's a fifth of a surface area of the, of the normal size soccer ball. And I'm just trying to think of aim small, miss small, like we're used to in so many things. Right? I don't think a tennis ball, very many kids in this country are going to do that. And that took me a while to hit that good of a ball. But I do find value in the size one soccer balls. I didn't bring them today, but uh, that's a great drill for me. 
because it doesn't hurt their foot, they're softer. Um, there's just a lot of positives. You know, it's low impact, low stress, but when they work harder and then go bring a football back in, it feels so much bigger. You know, so I, you know, I think that's pretty self-explanatory, like what the positives are behind that. Um, and uh, I think I have one more to show you guys, just thinking outside the box. Uh, this is called an endo board. One of my kids brings it to training sometimes. So we just did ball reception on it, right? Like, he's not the best at catching with his hands, so I kind of forced that behavior, and I wanted to see him find his base, right? So again, like, don't have to do these things, but you can find time. Uh, I, and then this is what I want to show you guys. I thought of this drill because we had to go to a game, and we had to share the food with Coach Briars. And uh, there's a ton of athletes who are about to be on the stadium field. So I found a line where the green met the white. And I used that in my split line, right? So check this out. This is phenomenal. Like the snapper, the LS, is also half ball on, half ball off. We're all sharing the same target point, line. And then essentially you just do the same thing. You, uh, you take the foot to center line and try to, try to stay just off the center. So decent snap, not great. Stayed on the line, and then he comes off the line. Just, I don't know if you can see that barely. Yeah, that's really good technique. Um, and I'll show it to you real time real quick. So you can see it, real speed. Handled a really negative snap. But you see how that ball stays in that sideline? He had a little win, but the ball went like pretty far. Um, Same rules, uh, I want them, that's a good question. I really, like I, I have, it's actually, let me just show you. So I bought these little size one balls that actually had a line, just so we had like to share with our ball scene. And I, I have them, even though it's a round ball, I still have them do that, you know, so that, that's, that's a really, that's half of it. And then from here, when it's possessed, I want them to treat it like the same thing. I want like, if you are my intended target, I wanna step to you, and then I wanna pass just off you, just to your right shoulder, and then I want that ball to go over you. You know, so then if I go, that's an A-gap step. Now here's where it gets really cool, and that's why I think this is so vital. And it's a good way to finish, because I'm done, that's the last slide. If you're my long snapper, and Johnny's, uh, Basaccio at the Raiders last year didn't let Johnny pre-snap direction left, right? So this is going down to it, right? That's the left pylon. He didn't let Johnny it's set to go. He made Johnny not sell it. So he, Johnny would go head up downfield. Now, why Johnny likes what we're all discussing today is if I'm a B gap step to go out, or actually, let me go see Coach Nolan with the glasses right there. All Johnny's got to do is receive, step center line to C gap, and then just be outside C, right? So we're really controlling it from the feet up no matter where we're going. So if you want to create directional long or directional punters, have them find the straightaway line with the soccer ball first, and then step. And wherever they step is their center line, right? It's excellent, I promise. I think that will really tie everything in. Like, why do you step to your center line? Why do you pass this off of it? It's so you can completely control the situation in reality. But I think it should be only done directionally when they're pretty good with it going this way. Obviously, we don't want to keep that in those good games, but they're training all day. You know, let them get good in an easier facet than going that way first, because they will drift, right? So the little side ball, right? Is that concerned? That's a really good question too. It is. They, it's going to go. Does it aim small, miss small, miss small? You know, it's like hitting a little. Uh, like Dominican baseball players, how they use the, the sticks and the smaller balls, they make less contact. They're phenomenal hitters when you give them a real bat and a ball. So they're gonna look like, they're gonna miss, they won't miss, but they'll miss, absolutely. I wouldn't do like a soccer ball mini drill on the main field, I'd let them go to the baseball field or something. But yeah, it's hard, um, very hard.
you know, I, I would say like even like my really good kids will hit maybe like three out of ten good, but but then they go they go back to the real ball, and it just almost feels too big. You know, it's a good problem. But yeah, it's a good question. Like it's it's not easy. It's, be, it's kind of daunting at first. Um, and then the last slide. That's just uh, how to get a hold of me. I wanted to bring up real quick. I am doing a, an event with uh, Ricardo and some of our guys in Daytona. Ricardo Allen is a, is a guy from Maine High School in Daytona area. It's just a it's just a good guy for our community. We do a free event every year, sponsored by Adidas, um, and it's for kids six to twelfth grade, all positions. So like, we're gonna do offense defense first this year in the morning, and then we're gonna do uh, special teams like around 11, 11.30. So if you guys know any kids, like I'm not just saying like high school, high school of course, but you know like Pop Warner or let me let me know. Um, it's on this website right here. Down here. It's on the home page. And it's next Saturday, March 7th. Uh, it's free, yeah. If you guys also if anyone wants to coach or help us out, like we, we it's kind of an open invite. Um, because we want we, one, one thing we do want is like player coach ratio to be small. You know, so if you have any interest, if you're in that area, you want to uh, be involved, just I would say the best thing to do is email me if you want to be involved. So I need to give you a separate like staff registration, like email password, because we're going to give you a different shirt. Every kid gives an Adidas top, and we give away several of these uh, as, as awards. It's, it's a neat deal, man. It's fun. Um, so, yeah. Uh, other than that, like, I am very active, and all I do on these two accounts, Instagram and Twitter, is I post just like one drill, or one situation, or one problem, or one, very seldom might be like, hey, look how good this kid is. I might say, hey, this is the one thing we're working on with him, you know? And so if you want to follow me on there, I'm, I'm on there, and I'd be happy to help that way. Uh, but yeah, I, I really appreciate your time.